I'm all for the for for for, for the last one. Mm. Yes. So that's it uh, in terms of our Buffalo Index. A lot of different. Uh, crowdfunding opportunities that are available out there in the market for your for your buffaloes as you heard i think the lowest we heard there was 150 rand um and you can actually be contributing towards you know um something big so on the other side of this we're actually going to be talking to um uh, we're going to be talking to christine uh, not christine sorry to catherine deploy who is uh from backup buddy and they are talking about how to use your money to actually crowdfund for causes right that are important either to society uh, or and they actually make sure that what you're doing is good and proper so we're going to be talking to them as we talk about our crowdfunding keep it locked this is the business buzz the, the business buzz we are talking crowdfunding today on the business buzz remember that you can keep in touch with us um get in touch with us continue the conversation tell us if you've ever crowdfunded uh for whatever cause um you are particularly engaged in as you heard earlier on people are crowdfunding for funerals weddings lost phones uh and the like holidays even so the the, the crowdfunding market is actually quite large on facebook you can find us that's vow fm voice of uh, vits uh, 88.1 FM and then you can find our Vitz Radio Academy Facebook page and then on Twitter we're at Vow FM and then our hashtag is hashtag business buzz so as we get into the topic as we get deep into the topic uh, on the line we are joined by uh, Catherine Duploy who is the Chief Operations Officer for Back a Buddy um, who are in the business of uh, funding for uh, cause their motto is actually uh, where cause meets crowd and so far they've actually been able to raise more than 69.9 million rand uh, for the various uh, charitable causes through their platform um so on the line as i said we have catherine how are you catherine I'm fine, thank you, and you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, so, uh, we actually were talking about the fact that you've actually been able to raise about uh, 16, more than 69 million rand um, using your platform over the years and that um, your motto is where cause meets crowd. Um, how mm. does, um, so as we begin our conversation, we just want to know, how does Backup Buddy actually work? And do you guys actually make uh, money from uh, the campaigns that are run on your platform? Well, first of all, I'm quite excited to say we're almost at the 70 million mark. So <laughs> I'm, I'm really <laughs> hoping that even uh, today or early tomorrow morning, we're going to roll over onto the 70 million for, for thousands of different campaigns and causes. Um, we are a registered non-profit organization. So our main objective through the site is not to generate, you know, massive amounts of money, but we do need to sustain ourselves as an organization. So how we do that, our business model, is essentially that we take a 5% administrative fee on all the funds that are raised through the platform. Yep. So that then comes to us as back of buddy to sustain our tech developers and the team that we have behind all of the, of the various campaigns. So how receptive would you say South Africans have been so far um, just to the issue of crowdfunding as a whole uh, perhaps in comparison to other countries uh, and regions mm -hmm. because we know like in the states uh, GoFundMe for example has actually mm -hmm. been very popular but you guys have taken mm -hmm. a bit of a, a, a different twist on the idea plus you're mm -hmm. dealing with the South African market. Uh, how mm -hmm. receptive are our South Africans? It's, it's, it's often a discussion that we have amongst the team because we're always looking for various ways uh, to sort of tell stories in a better way. Um, South Africans are extremely generous nation, a, a generous nation and the whole, the whole concept behind crowdfunding is the fact that you don't really have to rely on a high net worth individual to make a difference, but everybody collectively as a crowd can make a small contribution and collectively make a big impact. So there's, there's sort of like a bit of a science to crowdfunding. So if you've got a crowdfunding page, it's extremely important to articulate your cause in a fashion that, that appeals to the donor market. Yeah. So for example, donors really like to know exactly what their money will be used for. They don't really respond very well to general asks. So, for example, if somebody says, well, you know, I'm, I'm really in need of 
20,000 rand to help my family. It's too general. It's, it's too, too vague. And we find that donors do not respond to that kind of a campaign. But when the campaign creators are very specific about the needs, so if they say something like, you know, um, my child has diabetes and we don't have a medical aid and we need to send our child for a specific test that needs to be done and the test is going to cost 10,000 rand. Then the donor understands exactly what their money is going to be used for. So they tend to be more responsive and they tend to be, you know, they tend to make more contributions. We've also found the use of video, as I'm sure you, you are aware, um, video just seems to reach the, the donors in a better way than just yeah. a, 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 an image. So campaigns that use video tend to do a lot better. And I'm not even talking about a professional video. I'm talking about, you know, taking out your cell phone and, and talking to it because people give to people. So if you can find a way to make your campaign appeal to another person and really speak from the heart, we see those elements coming through nicely in terms of, of donors responding. I mean, there is the whole debate around donor fatigue and 150,000 <laughs> charities that all are asking for the same thing. Yeah. There's, there's always going to be a lot of people that need. So it's going to come down to how you ask and what you need the money for. So sort of on the same in the same sort of stream of thought um how do you guys then tackle with uh the security concerns um because you 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 are trying to appeal to these people mm. uh you're making the videos you're reaching out to the people you've got your your mm. team of people that are hyping uh, your campaign and all of that stuff but if someone mm. is saying how safe is my money or um how mm. uh, what what what's um, assurances are there that my money is actually mm. going to get to the person who's asking mm. for the money, that it's not going to be intercepted along the way, all of that stuff. Mm. What mm. measures do you guys have in place for all that? So that's an interesting question because that is certainly where we've had to differentiate ourselves from other crowdfunding platforms, specifically with a South African, within a South African context. Because even though South Africans are very generous, they also tend to be a little bit skeptical and a little bit, you know, can I trust this or can I not trust this? Yeah. Um, and so we've had to really um, come up with measures to, to increase the trustworthiness of our platform. And the way that we've done that is, first of all, the vetting process. So when you set up a campaign, it's not going to go up immediately. We are going to ask you for a copy of your ID book. We're going to ask you for at least two references of people that can verify that your cause is real. So if you say you're sick, we need a lot a letter from your doctor. If you say you're studying and you need fees, we need to we need to speak to somebody at the university to verify that this is in fact the case. So before your campaign goes up, there is a vetting process involved. So that's yeah. the one way to, to reassure donors. And then the other way is we try and encourage the campaign creators to let us manage the money. So it's not, a, it's not a prerequisite, it's not forced. But we say to the student who's trying to crowdfund, guys, let us pay the university directly, okay? So we can put in your text on your campaign page, back a buddy, we'll pay the institution directly because the donors like that. The okay. donors respond well to that. The, the campaign creator doesn't have to say yes, they can say no, I'd rather manage it myself. And that's fine, we'll set up a campaign, but you may not get as many donations as you would have if you had allowed Backer Buddy to manage the funds for you. So that's how we've sort of um, increased our trustworthiness amongst the, the South African population and also assuring the donors that to the best of our ability, the funds are going to, towards their intended purposes. So in terms of that as well, because you've already given mm. us uh, what criteria you sort of use to verify legitimacy. Mm. Uh, mm. But earlier on, you spoke about how um, there's this idea of donor fatigue and the fact that mm. there's probably um, thousands of charitable causes and non-profits out mm. there. What mm. is 
a worthy cause um how do you then because legitimacy is one thing to say that this thing is real yes um this person is actually trying to get um x amount of money to do x thing but what mm, is mm. a worthy cause? <laughs> because someone what? might be sitting, someone is probably sitting and saying to themselves, Catherine, uh, uh, there's something I want to do, but is, is Backup Buddy really the platform for me? Are you going to think that I'm worthy? Um, a worthy cause <laughs> is, is sort of like a question of what is beautiful. It's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. So, so what I, um, you know, my heart beats for causes around children because I'm a mother. Yeah. But my very good friend, Lisa, her heart beats for animals. Um, another person I know is passionate about environment. Another person I know is passionate about entrepreneurs and empowering entrepreneurs. So a worthy cause is, is I think there are many different worthy causes. Yeah. Um, it, it's, going to just, it's going to depend on... on the donors and whether they think your cause is speaks to their heart and how well you communicate it. So it's not for us as backer buddy to decide if the cause is worthy or not. Yeah. Um, we will set up that campaign for you and we will allow you to, to run a campaign as long as you meet our vetting criteria. Yeah. But whatever your cause is, that's, that's up to you and that's up to your, your target market of donors to decide whether they want to give it to us. We we sort of are more of, of a of the platform, or we we allow you to um, to ask for funds or fundraise in a creative way that donors respond well to. I think that uh, leads very well to our last question because um, I think something that our listeners might also be interested to just know is in terms of uh, the activity you've seen on your platform, as you said, you Mm. guys are close to that 70 million rand mark now. Um, Mm -hmm. What sort of campaigns uh, have been garnering the most attention um, over Mm. the years or currently and uh, the ones that are actually getting uh, the most funding at the moment? So, you know, at the top of my head, we are always going to have those disasters that are going to generate <laughs> a lot of attention and a lot of funds. We know this. Yeah. I'm talking knives and fires. I'm talking about uh, Mklengi, the unfortunate incident with a, with a triathlete who had his leg almost sawed off a couple of months ago. You know, these are extremely emotive um shocking causes that people respond to immediately. They, they, they go and they give and, and there's a large amount of money raised. Yeah. But those are, that's not our bread and butter. We rely on continuous campaign submissions with amounts like 10,000 raised, 20,000 raised. And we see, we see the medical campaigns yeah. for people who are ill. Those tend to do quite well. I think people feel a lot of compassion for, for other human beings who, who are suffering. Yeah. So those kinds of campaigns do do well. We also see campaigns do very well when somebody champions them. And by championing, I mean that it's another individual who stands up for someone. So, for example, even in an education case, if there's an 18-year-old youngster who, who can't afford to go to university and has applied for funding and unfortunately wasn't accepted, and they know their father or an uncle or somebody who knows them that's a little bit older, they set up the page and they say, guys, I'm doing this on behalf of my nephew, Mm. on behalf of my son. I can speak for him. He's amazing. That tends to do a lot better than if you set up a campaign yourself. Because when you speak about yourself, it doesn't sound as authentic as when somebody else speaks on your behalf. So those those kinds um, those kinds of campaigns generally do quite well. So that was it. We were talking to Catherine Duploy, who is uh, the Chief Operating Officer of uh, Back a Buddy, uh, just telling us what the uh, crowdfunding landscape is looking like in South Africa. I think uh, some takeaways, uh, big ones uh, for me were, if you campaign on behalf of someone or on behalf of a particular cause, um, that uh, campaign is uh, likely to take on uh, more 
more attention and more money and then the other interesting one is that in terms of trends uh, things that have to do with um, medical procedures or medical related campaigns are the ones that are garnering the most attention but on the other side of this we're going to be talking to an interesting entrepreneur who was able to crowdfund his business and his business is around um, the business of gin and he was able to crowdfund a gin and you know that was it it was a 